Hey, what's going on? Hope you're having a really good day. Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can book 20 sales calls every month for your business with YouTube. And if you follow these steps, you'll be able to flood your sales calendar with inbound sales appointments, which everyone knows is far better than outbound because it just comes to you naturally. And it means that you don't have to have a big sales team and your videos do most of the sales and it just makes everything better, right? You'll be able to win deals faster. I could go on and on and on. Everyone likes inbound sales appointments. Okay. Now this is specifically for YouTube, although it can apply to other social media platforms, but when it comes to YouTube, you can produce more long form content, which is the reason why you're able to actually generate these sales calls. So I'm going to walk you through this step by step. Now, if you haven't heard of me before, my name is Jordan Barnett. I run a company called video CEOs. What we do is we help our clients build audiences and then monetize those audiences so that they can increase their monthly recurring revenue. And the way that we do that is with faceless video content that can be published across multiple social media channels in order to generate more inbound appointments, more inbound appointments rather, uh, win deals faster, so cut down your sales cycle and just reach hundreds of thousands of people every month, okay? Now, before I get sunk into this, I just wanna let you know that for this to work, you don't need to have lots of subscribers, okay? In fact, it's not really important at all, whether you have an audience or not, okay? Uh, you don't need any fancy camera equipment or crazy editing skills for this to work. And in fact, you don't need to be on camera or even show your face because you can do this with faceless video content which is again, what we specialize in doing. This is content that you use uh, without you having to be on camera or show your face, right? You don't have to set up your camera and record yourself. You can leverage a virtual team to produce this video content, which means that you can show up consistently every single day and get to save yourself a lot of time, right? So if you wanna book more sales appointments with YouTube, the first step that you have to follow is to create evergreen content of people in your niche actually are searching for. So instead of trying to copy other people's videos, especially if you're in like B2B or you know, you're a business, you're trying to sell business services. There's no point copying other people's videos that are usually creators. You need to come up with your own video content that is going to specifically help your future customers or your current clients, right? So instead, what you wanna do is you wanna piggyback off of trends and keywords. So there's a few ways that you can do that, but basically what you wanna find out is what your ideal customers are actively searching for and then create video content answering those questions. Okay, that's when it comes to keywords and even hashtags, all right? Piggybacking of trends is another, another thing that you can do. So depending on what's happening in your industry, if there's a new, new piece of news or a new event, you wanna piggyback off what is already working on YouTube. So if you see videos that are in your niche, your industry vertical, and they're getting you know, tons of views every day or every month, you wanna piggyback off of those videos, which essentially means that YouTube will suggest those videos, will suggest your videos rather after someone has watched those popular videos. So this is usually why if you're a YouTube creator, after a few months, your videos just go wild, like, and you get lots of views because YouTube starts suggesting your video to people that have watched something quite similar. All right. The one thing that you do want to take control of is improving your thumbnail. So if you do a search and you find videos that you can piggyback off, you want to improve the thumbnail that you're creating for your own video so that you can maximize the amount of suggestions and reach and views that you're going to be getting on the video that you upload. So a few things or a few ways that you can do this is you can make a list of all of the problems that your ideal customers have. You can list all of the questions that they typically ask you, or you can even reach out to them and ask them what might be valuable or helpful to them and then create video topics around that. Okay. You can use some software, right? That, you know, these are the ones I love to use TubeBuddy, keywords everywhere, or even VidIQ. It helps you research the keywords. It helps, helps you look at the competition scores, right? And the search volume as well. So you want to try and create video content. If you're using this, these soft, these pieces of software like vidIQ, you want to create content that either has high search volume, low competition or low search volume, low competition. A reason why you might want to do the second one is because it means that you could dominate that content pillar. So if in the future, more people start searching for it, you're already going to rank super high because it's zero competition. Okay. It just allows you to dominate more pillars. So here's a few screenshots. This is keywords everywhere. So as you can see, when you type in a potential keyword that you want to use in your video uh, or like the topic that you're using, you can see the tags that are most popular. So you can take these tags and you can apply it to your video to optimize it and get your videos ranked in search. Um, you can also look at the keyword difficulties, top channels relevant to um, you know that keyword as well. I like to use keywords everywhere, mostly for the use tags, okay? Because in fact, what I prefer is vidIQ because it gives you the competition score. So as you can see, I've typed in YouTube automation here. 
the volume of search is massive, right? It's, it's 75, so you want a high score, um, but the competition is also very low, right? So this makes it a really, really good keyword that I could use as you know some of my video topics. So make sure you get your title and headline correct. Use the emotional headline analyzer from AN Institute, and then your thumbnail needs to be on point. If you're gonna spend any money on video content, make sure you spend money on a really good thumbnail designer because if no one clicks on your video, like the content of the video doesn't make any difference, right? No one's, no one's gonna watch it, you're gonna get nothing out of it. So in order to get a really good headline, I use I like to use the Advanced uh, Marketing Institute, AMI. So, um, you know, like this, I'll show you how to do it, how to get clients. Basically it gives you a score, um, depending on the words that you use and the structure of your sentence, it could be emotional, it could be logical, uh, it could be a mix of, of you know, everything, empathetic, spiritual, so you get different scores uh, and you wanna try and you know, maximize this, so the higher the score, the better, but depending on your content as well, maybe you want a more logical headline, maybe you want a more spiritual one, it's totally dependent on you, but this is a really good tool that, that I like to use to create the headlines. Make sure you optimize all your videos with tags and include a keyword heavy description. This, will, this is gonna help you get ranked. So I've already talked about piggybacking off of trends to get suggested, that's gonna help you get ranked. Making sure you have an optimized headline, making sure that you're creating topics around what people are already searching for, um, and then optimizing the video with a description. Okay, so include the tags, right, that you get from keywords everywhere into the description itself, and this is gonna maximize the amount of uh, search volume you can get on your video. Okay, and a real quick tip, if you wanna look at other people's tags, like what people are using as their keywords in their videos, if you, for example, we're gonna piggyback off of, of the trend and you didn't wanna use this piece of software, you can just right click on the YouTube video itself, like on the page uh, of your competitor, right click and then page inspect, and you can search for keywords and you get a list of all the keywords that they're using. Right? That's if you don't wanna use any software, but I, I really recommend that you use some of these. Now, step two is to drive traffic to your videos because without traffic, even the best video in the world is not going to get you any sales, right? No one's going to have the chance to watch it. So there's two main ways to get people to watch your videos organically. One is through search, which I've, I've kind of already focused on already. The second one is through the YouTube algorithm. That's when they recommend or suggest your videos uh, to people that watch something similar. Now, you can focus on ranking high for keywords to get traffic through search, or you can attempt to get your videos recommended to other people on YouTube. And what I like to do is, it's more or less a, a combined strategy of the two in order to dominate that search area. So an easy, easy way to get your video recommended by YouTube is just by piggybacking off of trends, which I've already min mentioned. This just means finding popular videos in your niche, in your, in, in your industry, recreating them to fit your brand and improving the thumbnail, okay? And if you do this right, YouTube's gonna recommend your video next in the list to the viewers that are watching that popular video. So if your video is suggested, you know, for example, right after a video that's getting thousand views per hour, you can see how that's gonna translate into cash. You're just gonna get a massive amount of reach. And if the video you create has call to actions and it's actually valuable, people are gonna book calls from there, right? So this is usually how or why some videos just get massive traction months or even years after they're uploaded. If you've ever uploaded a video and then all of a sudden it's just like, yes, it's getting like hundreds and hundreds of views just out of nowhere, it's because YouTube is recommending that video, okay? So ranking for search, making sure your videos are optimized for search and then piggybacking off of trends, it's gonna help you get a massive amount of traffic, leads and sales, no doubt about it. So if you combine these two strategies together, you can't lose, All right? So there's actually more than one way to drive traffic outside of YouTube. Most people, when they're selling you the idea of you know, creating a channel, is just to focus on the search terms and uh, you know, piggybacking off of trends, which are both great. But if you're a business, especially if you're a successful business, then you've already built an audience in, in some regard. You have an email list, you've got social media presence in some you know, way, shape or form. So you can send your videos to your email list. That's one way of doing it. You can embed videos to LinkedIn articles as well. That's gonna help you get even more search traffic. So you literally upload it to YouTube, you embed the YouTube link into your LinkedIn article, you download the transcript, okay? You can use software for that. It's not very much, uh, it doesn't cost you very much to download the transcript of the video and you can add them together. So when people are doing searches, you know, sometimes your YouTube videos might show up at the top, sometimes your LinkedIn articles. You can publish your videos to social media, all right, if you've got an audience already. If you've got staff and a team, get them to post the, the same videos. And you can also run ads on YouTube as well. So you can, you can actually run ads to the video itself. I don't really recommend doing this, but if you just wanted to get a massive amount of traffic and views, um, you know, this could be a strategy that you might wanna follow. And so YouTube videos are really valuable because they're not just 
a way to generate inbound leads, but you can also you know, generate outbound leads this way. So when you're DMing people or you know, doing cold email, you now have sales assets that you can provide to those potential customers before they jump on a call. Okay? And if they book a call, you can include your YouTube videos into the, your uh, email automation sequence in order to boost their buying temperature so that when they do jump on the call, most of the questions have been answered. They've more or less made up their mind and it just takes you know, a short conversation for you and the prospect to figure out if it's a good fit or not. Now, number three, use data to improve your video. So you, you're gonna wanna relentlessly check your analytics to see what's working and what doesn't, and then just do more of what's working and, and improve on what's what's not working, okay? Put more, most of your focus into the topics that people are actually looking for, and that's getting you the most reach, okay? It makes a lot of sense. So some of the key metrics that you want to look for are the click-through rates. If you have a low click-through rate on your videos, you need to improve your thumbnails, okay? Super important. If people aren't clicking on the videos, you're, you know, you're, you're gonna be unable to actually sell, right? And the watch time of your attention. If you've got long watch time, it means that you can include calls to action, like booking an appointment. It means that people watching the videos get to consume more of the content, right? So if you think about the seven hour rule, Typically, people need to consume seven hours worth of your content before they are warm enough to buy from you, right? And also, it means that YouTube is going to be more likely to suggest your videos, right, if you have a high watch time. So you should check your audience information often, okay? You want to look at who they are, when they're on YouTube, what ch other channels they're watching, their demographics. You can get all of this information in your uh, YouTube Creator Studio. Always ask yourself how you can get more people to click on the video, 1% more. Okay, than your last one, right? You just want to improve 1% each time. Ask yourself also how you can get more people to watch your video, like longer, all right? So if, if you're finding that 25% of that, you know, the first 25% people are dropping off, what you want to do is try and increase that. So figure out why people are dropping off. If it, is it to do with, is it to do with you being on camera and the voice, or is it to do with the voice actor that you're using? Perhaps you're not transitioning enough. It could be anything, right? So they're the two most important things to improve. Click through rates, watch time. More watch time means more suggested video views. Okay. Consistency. Now, this is a big one. A lot of people struggle, struggle with this because they're on camera all the time. And if you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, it's going to be very difficult for you to be consistent. So you're probably not going to see the results for the first, second, or third month, right? Even if you're doing faceless video content, which is what I recommend to businesses that want to build a brand. Um, but, you know, ultimately, you have to be consistent. You've got to post two to three videos a week for a few months in order to see any results, right? After three months, that's 24 to 36 videos, which is the standard recommendation to figure out whether you need to change something or not, all right? Now I recommend posting at least 30 videos, looking at the stats, and then looking at what you can improve on your strategy, right? It could be click-through rates, it could be the watch times, it could be anything. Okay, review the data and then optimize based on what you see. Now, consistency, like I said, is gonna be the hardest part for most business owners because you have to transition from being an entrepreneur to a creator. You've got lots of hats that you're wearing. The last thing you wanna do is add a new hat, which is like you being a, a, you know, a, a TV presenter, a creator, an influencer, right? Um, and that's gonna take up a big chunk of your time if you decide to do that. A lot of people believe that you've gotta be on camera for you know, your prospects to build trust of you or whatever it is. This is only relevant if you're a coach or you know, like an independent consultant, if you're trying to build a business like and a business brand and you're expecting that your business is gonna to grow to a level where you're gonna have you know, hundreds of potential staff if it gets big and you're gonna be earning multi millions worth of dollars, <laughs> millions and millions of dollars, um, you wanna step back from the business via the CEO and let the brand take care of the sales, right? So that's why I recommend virtual teams and YouTube automation so that you can consistently produce video content. So you can hire a virtual team to manage your entire video production line this way. So you get script writers, voice actors, video producers, graphic designers, project manager, even, okay? This is kind of like it's level up once you've already got the system in place, but ultimately you're gonna want someone to manage this team so that you can consistently produce more videos. It's gonna take a lot of trial and error, obviously, to hunt for the right talent and then train them to produce video content that's relevant to your brand and what you wanna accomplish. But once you have everything now down, you can pump out as many videos as you like. You can literally post two, three, four, five, six videos every single day, depending on how much money you can pay your virtual production team, right? Now, right now I'm using multiple virtual teams to publish 48 videos every single day for my clients. Right? This is how we're able to 
get videos across six different social media platforms, right? Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. And because of publishing this video content across multiple channels, we're able to achieve omnipresence for the businesses that we work with. And we are able to reach hundreds of thousands of people every single month. Now it took me a year to figure all of this out, believe it or not, right? How to build teams that can handle this kind of workload. That's hard enough. How to actually train them on the, the delivery process and to make sure that they're, they're doing it on time as well, because you have to be consistent. Right, you have a lot of moving parts, and then how to optimize the videos, like I said, with tags, the headlines, the thumbnails, really figuring out what works and what doesn't. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm still learning every single day because things change all the time. All right, algorithms change. No one is truly an expert in in anything. They just keep up to date with new uh, algorithm changes and, and things like that. So you really have three options. Right, you can spend time recording your own videos and be on camera. You can be the creator, and you can you know, sacrifice time that could apply elsewhere in your business or sacrifice your family time or your you know, time with friends. God forbid you don't want to be doing that, right? So that is one option, depending on what kind of industry or business you're working in, what, what your goals are. The second one is to learn how to hire and train a virtual team, right? Now, this might take you like six months of trial and error to really figure out and nail down. It took me about a year. If you consume my content, it's going to take you about six months. Hopefully, we can we can half that down. So you're more than welcome to do that if it's something that you want to do and you want to bring that knowledge in house and you you know essentially want to run a video production team in house. Uh, but a lot of people don't want to do this because they're not a, a media company. They're not a video production company. You, you know, typically you're selling a service completely unrelated to video production. Um, but it's an option. And then the third one is to work with me and my team, which means that you can avoid all of the you can avoid all of the mistakes. Uh, you can get things right straight away and the speed of delivery is just going to be faster, right? You can actually get these videos pumping out. Uh, we can start reaching 100,000 people a month for you within like 30 days or less, right? So if you're interested in working with me and my team or you want to learn how this could apply for your business so that you can do it yourself, right? How, how exactly we you know hunt for uh, talented people that we can build virtual teams from, um, you're more than welcome to book a call with me. Uh, or you're either going to get me on the call or someone else in my team. Uh, about 15, 20 minutes. We'll go through step by step exactly how we do everything. You can take the same, you can take that knowledge and apply it into your business yourself. Or if you decide that it might be a good fit to work with us, um, we might invite you into the program as well. And we only take on a limited amount of people, you know, you know, and we also want to make sure that you're going to be a good fit because ideally we're going to be working with you long term. Um, so when you do schedule that call, make sure you complete the application form. We'll figure out if it's a good fit. Um, but like I said, you can take that knowledge for yourself and apply it to your own business. Um, you know, that's. Uh, that's one of the benefits of booking a call with us. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Like I said, my name is Jordan Barnett, uh, founder of Video CEOs. We do this for our clients day in and day out, build audiences and then monetize it because if you're reaching hundreds of thousands of people a month with video content, you can then monetize every segment of that audience. It's not just one segment, like just going after the CEOs. You can monetize everyone else with low ticket offers and send them into your high ticket offers and generate more monthly recurring revenue this way. So hopefully this has been insightful and I will see you in the next one.